Welcome, everybody, to this edition of The Ranting Cast. I'm your host, Ranting Ron, and my special guest tonight from CBS Sports Radio, Amy Lawrence. You will listen to her on the radio if you're awake from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I usually pick up around 4.30 a.m. I'm telling you, if you haven't listened to it, it's great. I used to just put it on just because it was something to do on my way to work, and it, <laughs> it's, it's I, I didn't know. I don't know who's on it, too, who's on. And until about two weeks ago, I really thought it was just, Maybe uh, overnight, she's probably just by recording. But I tweeted her, uh, I didn't know, so I tweeted you something. Well, I'm thinking, who's gonna be up? I'm thinking, oh, I thought maybe you were in LA. I don't, at 4 30 in the morning, I'm not really awake, right? I'm like, you know, I'm doing a little, I start working at eight in the morning, but I leave for 4 30. I do some errands in the morning, and then I tweeted you, and you said my tweet. I go, oh, my, oh she's live, you know. So ever since then, it's like, but I listen, and you are funny, and I'll say it's funny. But before we start tonight, I have a special announcement to make. So I come home today at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and my wife gives me this note. And my birthday is July twenty fourth, right? So I'm thinking, oh, cruise, we're kidding me. I said we're going to Disney World, no. And then I couldn't think of something. I was thinking something else, and I, I forgot the second guess. The third guess, I guessed it. As many of you, my followers, know, me and my wife are foster parents, and. For three, just over three years now, our little boy, Rome, has been in our family since it'll be three years in August. He came to us at four months old. Uh, we weren't planning on adopting him ever, but uh, sometimes that'll just happen. It's up to God. And we trust in God what we're going to do. And so uh, after a couple of years, you know, last year, they had, you know, we year and a half ago, they said, would you consider changing your status to adoption? And well, he's been with us this long. He's, he's walking now. He, he only knows us. Yeah, we'll do it. Well, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of curveballs. The pandemic slows things down. On July 27th this year, we're going to court, and he will finally be a little ranting Ron, part of our family. Oh, congratulations, and, Ron. That's amazing. Thank you. It, it's been a long time coming. Um until the court date was finalized, which we couldn't wait for the court date. It was always like, well, anything can happen. You never know. It's always, you know, we didn't, you know, and we didn't want to deal with the heartbreak. And, but we knew, we trusted. We said, oh, God's got this. God's got this. You know, other kids have come, stayed for us a little while and left. Uh, but this boy's been with us since he's uh, three months old, two and a half, three months old. He's got a, a liver condition. My wife being a nurse, uh, he does have medical needs. And they figured my wife would be... A per, you know, it, it all worked out where how we first got him was he came to us because the family that was first had him had to go on vacation out of state. Well, he couldn't leave the state without his bio mom's permission, but they didn't, you know, plus they didn't, well, be new, they didn't want him flying with his medical condition. And then the, the foster family said, you know, oh, and plus we got uh, so much. And then finally the court said, can the other family want to take him, just want to just take him, you know, and hold on, you know, and basically not hold on him, but basically be his foster parents and we was we said sure <laughs> and um so you know and then that was big been with us ever since my wife uh one year on thanksgiving i take him to new york city for an operation he uh liver his liver is very bad he's gonna need new liver by the time he's a year and a half old um well he went to see a doctor in new york and the doctor had an idea drained some stuff with his liver in new york city did some bad i don't tell that whatever doctor did some medical procedure and it they checked recently like i say he's three and a half year, years old now he still has the same liver. It's actually regenerating. And so um, in God's mercy, just he may still need a liver someday. But the older he gets, the easier it's going to be for him. But they can't believe how he's thriving. And, uh, you know, and I know people are here for the sports talk, but I had, to, I, had to, I had to start with that story because, you know, the, a lot of people follow me know that, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're adoption. I've, I've dealt with a lot of people because he is a black child. And I've been cursed at people on Twitter about saying, well, he should be with a black family. Or I've been curse that i can't believe a white man wants to take a little black baby uh, and, and after what happened in buffalo a few weeks ago which i'm sure you heard at a grocery store i fear for him at being a black child but we're going to bring him up as a child we don't look at him as a color so there's been negative from some of the from people out there i get messages well well that's your problem you know, those are the people i fear the most in the world and they hope god has mercy on their soul because god puts the kids where he wants them and he's with us and we're going to take very good care of them We'll go from there. So that's my special announcement tonight. Um, Aww, on March, on uh, June, awesome. July, July 27th of this year, Little Ranting Rome will officially become Ezra Donovan Rome. We're keeping Rome as part of his name, Tozak. 
and he will be ours forever. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so glad that uh, you have that to look forward to. And it sounds like your, your family is blessed by this little boy. <clears throat> yes. Um, we have seven of our own children before we started uh, doing this, but now they're all older in school. My wife was like, you know, she has friends who, uh, do, uh, do, um, foster caring and, um, sorry, my mind <clears throat> do do foster care. So my wife said we should do that someday. And I'm like, you got never been in our house, <laughs> but if I will, me and my wife, we always talk and it was something she really had to do. And I said, if this is what you want to do, tell me what I need to do. So we went to class and we did all this. And like I said, we have had kids come and go, mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of our older children are out of the house. So everyone loves him. He's just been, he's just part of the family since he's, you know, a month and a half, two months old. Uh, it's been a blur. He came in August. So he'll be, he'll be, he'll be four in February. He just turned three. Aww. So if anyone, if you, maybe you can never have a child or somebody can have a child, whatever, foster parenting is a, a way to go. Don't go into it either with the idea of you want to go into it so you can adopt. Go into it for reunification with, if it's possible, with the parents uh, who maybe are struggling, d drug addictions, just having problems, financially problems. There's lots of reasons mm -hmm. why kids go into foster care. Uh, families are getting divorced and just going through some stuff. Go into it with unification, but keep an open mind that maybe you will end up adopting a child. If you go into it saying, oh, I'll go to foster care, I can adopt a child, it be much cheaper. It's not really what it's about. And yeah, there are some children who are going in quickly for just adoption, but we weren't going into that for that. And we were at first with this bio mom. We're working with her. We're hoping, but it just, young kid, having a kid, no support. We just felt that God put him in us. It was just, it was always going to be the plan. We felt it probably after about six to seven months in, I said, boy, if we hey, somebody, he's going to go home. And she said to us, the bio mom said, you know, just so you know, when he comes home, I want you to be part of his life forever. Normally it's not a good fit uh, where the parents, of foster parents and Papa Day, it's usually like a class, like I'm, we're still in my babies and stuff. That's not what we're doing. We're, we're here to help. Um, and then one day, about a year and a year and a half ago, I'm sorry, COVID really has thrown my timeline off here, the <laughs> pandemic and everything. Yeah. About a year and a half ago, um, she was on, she was on, uh, she was doing, seeing him only through uh, like something like this, right? Through uh, Zoom. And she said to us, she goes, I'm really just blessed he's with you. That's what we knew. I think she knew this was not this is gonna end the way it was going to end. So, so that's my breaking news for tonight. Um, Amy Lawrence of CBS Sports Radio. You can follow Hi. her at A Law Nothing Radio. Nothing I can say after that is going to be nearly as interesting or compelling. Oh <laughs> yes, yes, is it? You're all. It is funny. I I I got out late this morning. Like I said I got out of quarter to five this morning. It sounded like you were having difficulty this morning, but you guys are funny. Your co-host is funny. Um, it's well, just, okay, you, let's be fair. The, the he's not a co-host. He, he's a producer. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. He'll he's appreciate funny. that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, the producer, and what's his name? <laughs> his Jim, name is Producer James. James. Okay, see, I didn't do that much. Um, it's just funny when, you know, and I was going to look for, the other day you are talking about um, you singing, and they caught it on your previous station, and, they, and I said, ah, I should look up. I said, I won't do that. Um, that without your permission, that's how just let it go. And um, I got home, was gonna stop, and my wife, of course, gives me this thing, so I'm just all like rushing in here. And I set up outside today, I'm usually in my studio, but it's too beautiful outside. I'm redoing my studio downstairs. Um, so if you hear a car go by or birds chirping, hey, it's a beautiful day. So, awesome. welcome to the Ranty Ron show. So, you know, you live in New Jersey area, New York City area. Yes, CBS Sports Radio headquarters is located in Lower Manhattan. So I live in Northern Jersey and drive into Lower Manhattan every night for the show. So that takes you about uh, four hours, probably. Um. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, it doesn't. It's a 52 miles round trip, but it's mostly highway. Though in New York City, as most people know, there's no against traffic or off traffic. There's just traffic. Uh, yep. So yes, there's plenty of traffic all the time. And there are nights where... I get stuck or James gets stuck. He comes from Long Island. So he's on the other side of the island. But yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a source of road rage. And every now and then I feel a twinge of jealousy for all those people that work from home. But it, it's not good for the radio show, at least on my end. So um, it's, it's something that I've committed to do. I was only at home for two months before I went back in July of 2020. And I have remained in studio since. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, 
Yeah, and you're in the Rocket Mortgage Studios, and <laughs> so um, yeah, no, it's great. You guys are great. It's just you're just you're just fun, and you know you go on these little tangents, which is great. Like oh, uh, po yes. po post eggs, I would not need a post egg. Uh -uh. Ew, um, it's no. funny. I mean, you talk sports. Um, I yeah, I know you're a big hockey fan and a NBA fan. If I'm probably a fan of everything. So, um, how old were you when you really started getting into sports? Like where you thought, hey, I really want to do this. Either play sports start announcing, become whatever you know as your career went on. Mm. Well, I started playing sports when I was in third grade and I still have a photo. I can remember it very distinctly. Me in my bright red Little League uniform with my hair sticking out from underneath my hat and the bright red stirrups, my white cleats. And so I started playing softball then and, and played all the way through high school and college and then picked up basketball in high school and played volleyball, ran cross country, did a variety of sports, ran track as well. Um, so I was always playing sports and very active, but it wasn't until I fell in love with the late 80s, early 90s Boston Celtics that I realized that I wanted to do a career in, in sports broadcasting. And I fell in love because I would listen. We didn't have cable TV when I lived uh, out in the boonies in Concord, New Hampshire growing up. And so the only way I could follow Larry Bird and Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale and Danny Ainge and Dennis Johnson and my beloved Celtics was to listen on the radio to the likes of Johnny Most and Glenn Ordway, our iconic voices who did play-by-play -play for the Celtics radio network back then. And I fell in love with the idea of being able to describe the action or tell a story to listeners with such detail and such emotion and passion that they didn't feel like they were missing it just because they couldn't see it with their own two eyes. And thus right. began a long love affair with radio. I'm a radio junkie. I've always been. I have zero desire to work in TV, though I have done some TV uh, on the side. But I Look, love you, radio. Yeah, right. You want to use your picture on my show and you're like the second person to do it when you asked if that was okay? I said, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, sh I should be on radio. I only have a face for radio. So, you know. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Face but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but come on, yeah. like we don't, we come in all shapes and sizes and colors right. and as you were talking about. Uh, so yeah, so since 16 years old, I've been telling people that I would be the first female Johnny Most, first female play-by-play -play announcer uh, to do NBA games on the radio. And that's still the dream job, but I had to pay bills along the way. And it turns out, Ron, that I'm pretty darn good at this talking thing. And so I started out news. I did probably, well, I started out, my first job was at WHAM. My first commercial job was at WHAM in Rochester, New York. Yeah, that's and up the so, street. Uh, yeah, so I, I worked in Rochester right out of Syracuse, graduated yeah. from Syracuse with my master's, worked in Rochester for a year plus. I did news as my job, but I did sports for free on Saturday morning. So I'd work overnights and they would let me stick around and do sports broadcasts, sports updates for free. Uh, and so from there, I started hopping all over the country, went back to New Hampshire, but upstate. My first job doing play-by-play -play was Lebanon, New Hampshire High School Boys Basketball. And I covered Dartmouth sports while I was in upstate New Hampshire, the Hanover area. And have moved all around, uh, eventually made the jump to network radio, ESPN Radio. I started there in 2005, but it became my full-time job around 2007. And then in 2013, well, late 2012, CBS Sports Radio was starting. And Mark Chernoff, who is the program director and general manager at the time, called me up and asked me if I was available and wanted to come work for him. And so I took, uh, I took a flyer and restarted my career and picked up my entire life and moved it to northern New Jersey into the New York City area. And that was almost 10 years ago, nine and a half years ago. I cannot believe it, but the best career move I ever made. Uh, that's, uh, I was actually in New York city last week and, uh, I went to a Mets game and, uh, so I, I, I got a hotel really close because I'm like, Oh gosh, I've driven, I've been in New York city one other time before and I was scared to drive <laughs> and I'll get into that for a minute. But uh, of course now I did not know my hotel was in the middle of Chinatown. So I took my eight year old son and he's like, wow. I go, oh, Chinatown's I right near our office. We're actually oh. down in lower Manhattan near Chinatown. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was right next to Met Stadium, like right there. Like I could, we walked oh, to the game. Oh, that Chinatown. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, wrong Chinatown. Okay, okay. there's two. There's more than one. Well, well, yeah, there's there's one. You were in Queens, so there's one in yeah. Queens, and there's okay. there's one in Manhattan. Yeah. So we stayed there. We walked to the game. I went, but then, but the next the day earlier, the game was Thursday night. So we went to the, all day. We're walking around uh, Times Square, and I said, "Okay, we'll drive." And I'm like, 
I'll say something. This traffic is bad. It's bumper to bumper, and these people squeeze, but they're good at it. I'm like, <laughs> I I think I now I know when somebody's going to Buffalo down to 290 and they do this, I go, I bet they're from New York City. <laughs> you can't do that here. And I'm like, I'm gonna try some of this. I didn't try some of that. Um, I will say as much as but everyone's kind of like, except you have like ambulances going through, no one lets them through, the cops go on the side of the roads are fast, but it's and uh oh, walking around Times Square was amazing. It was just we went to went to M&M store. We were walking around an hour. I think we went around one block. It was so <laughs> much stuff. NBA store, the hockey store, the MLB store. It was just, you know, because I'm a big Mets fan. So I told my son, his first major league baseball game, he wanted to go to a Mets game. So that's where we went in New York. I said, well, Pittsburgh's out in the street. It's real. Let's go to New York. All right. 38 bucks to park all day. I thought, well, that's pretty <laughs> cheap. I'm okay with that. I mean, here's seven bucks, but I'll pay the 30. I don't know what I'm getting into. Um, it, it was uh, New York City. It, it was. I I enjoyed it. Um, it looked. It's a, it's a lot cleaner than it was in 2001 when I was there last. It seems like um, the homeless population has gotten a lot less from what I seen last, unless they're not there no more. I expect it different. Um, from what I remember, I, 2001 was 20 years ago. It. I liked it. So um, you know, I'll go. I'll go again in 20 years. But uh, <laughs> no, no, I go again. It was. It was a lot of fun. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. And I, when I came back home, I said I would never live there. I don't know how you do it. Well, I live in Jersey in a small town. I have a little house with a postage stamp of a yard. I couldn't live in New York City. A, I couldn't afford it. And B, I need to get out. When I'm done with work, I need to get out. Because it is stressful, the traffic and the parking. And it's it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of added danger to it that wasn't there two years ago. So I'm pretty careful. But I yeah. get out at 6 o'clock uh, in the morning Eastern time. And I'm so thankful to get home to my little New Jersey neighborhood. There you go. And uh, you have a dog, right? I have a dog and a cat, yes. And, okay, I'm not a cat person, They run my life. Yeah, I'm starting to know, yeah, right? You know, and your dog didn't let you sleep during the day, so. Ever, so, ever. So you, you, you know, you go, can I mention where you worked before? You worked at CBS, am I allowed to say that? I know you don't. No, I work at CBS Sports Radio now. Now, but previously you worked at the other station. At ESPN Radio. Okay, yeah. I want you to say that. So you were at ESPN for seven years? Um, well, I started working there in, in 05. It was my full-time job yep. by 2007. And yep. I left there, uh, after Christmas on 2000 in 2012. Okay. So seven years. Um, that's, that's, so that's, about, that's pretty good. And, um, Thank why you. did you, why <laughs> did you leave? That's pretty, seven years. Pretty good. I mean, you know, one spot, a lot of times people don't stay. Now our local radio guys here, I don't know if you know them on WGR 550, Howard Simon and uh, Jeremy White in the morning. They come on right after you. I actually mentioned you on the show one day. But I, I call on the radio a lot. so um, And they let me through all the time. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, hey, you know, Amy Lawrence, you know, right? And uh, Jeremy's like, oh, I listen to her all, all when I, on my way to work. Because they start at 6 a.m. I go, yeah, it's, it's just talking about, like, you know, imagine like Cincinnati and Cleveland. You know, imagine in Buffalo. Oh, imagine Buffalo. Imagine Buffalo. Wins, like how that town. It was something you were saying, which was a good thing. And yeah, we try to imagine it and it's going to be nuts. So, it so will then be. You, yes. you went from ESPN radio to yep. now, where was ESPN located in New York? No, Bristol, Connecticut. Oh, it's, Bristol, Connecticut. Yeah, know it's that. the college campus there, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I should know that. That's where they started. Um, do you know the first, uh, the first major event, um, out of the top four sports that was on ESPN that made Chris Berman almost cry on TV? I don't. That would have been before my time. Yeah, I remember. The Chicago Bears versus Miami Dolphins, uh, Monday Night Football, <laughs> or they, whatever night it was, they had they were getting football for the first time NFL football, and yeah. it was uh, the Bears versus Miami, and he was so they were so excited, and I said, oh, this, I used to just watch the Stradivarius football on that channel, so that's all they ever had, like you, you know, it was new. I mean, it's like very early '80s, so and cable. Then you know, I, I grew up with five channels, and then it became like eight or ten, and, and then <laughs> you had to have cable to watch hockey games, so you know. So we always had cable, but uh, so you leave ESPN and you've been at CBS Sports Radio since, and that's always been in New York City, correct? Right. It's it was a startup on January first, two thousand thirteen. So we are in Lower Manhattan, along with seven or eight other local New York stations, including WFAN, which is our New York affiliate. W the fan, yep, yep, yep. Is Mike and Mike on that show? T station, maybe not. Uh, no, that's that's oh. uh, other network. Okay, Actually, they, I, they don't do they don't do a show anymore. They're done. Oh, okay. And no one liked him anyways. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I like everybody. But um, all right. So, you know, now you're in the studio. Are you in the same studio you started at there? 
Yes, we, okay. <laughs> we were supposed to have new ones. There's a lot of things that were supposed to change. But as you point out, during the pandemic, all bets were off. So a lot of a, a lot of pivots during during the pandemic. But I do enjoy being in studio. And uh, I ha my, if my producer has to be there, so should I. That's my theory. That's cool. That, that's, that's awesome. You know, I mean, it's got to be just cool that you're just, you know, uh, 2 a.m. slot to 6 a.m. slot. For some reason, you're just perfect for that. I mean, I'm sure you'd rather have a better slot, but. And... No, you're wrong about that, actually. That's not, that's a, um, a misnomer and a myth that I correct with people all the time. I've had multiple chances to change time slots and I have chosen to stay where I am. Well, it's, a, it's a national show. It's only 11 o'clock on the West Coast when we start. Uh, right. We have listeners in Hawaii and Alaska. It's even earlier there. Mm. We have more clearance on the network than any other show. So 300 plus affiliates and a, and a million other ways you can listen. Mm. And it's not only late night West Coast wrap, the wrap up of all the games that have just finished. In some cases, like right now, we're just finishing up uh, hockey season. And so tonight we've got mm. the game four of the Stanley Cup final, the NBA Got a chance to be the first show on, on the radio to crown the Warriors champions. But I also work Sunday nights, and I didn't want to give up Sunday nights during NFL season because that's my absolute favorite. So my uh -huh. work week starts Sunday night. It runs through Friday morning. Our audience is completely different the last 90 minutes of the show because it's a lot of uh, East Coast or East Eastern time zone, Central time zone right. uh, commuters and people who are up and getting ready for their day. So it's, it's a great time slot. It's tough in terms of sleep because I have sleep issues, but I've had three, three, four chances to change time slots and have chosen to stay where I am. Well, that, that's, that's actually pretty awesome. So, all right, we're going to take a station break here for well, a station break. Yes. We're taking a station break. Um, we're taking a, what do you call us? A podcast break. And our sponsors tonight are as usual. Remember, if you have questions, just type them in there. We'll take them. Uh, just keep them clean. They go to me first. If they're not nice, you won't be seeing them. All right. Our sponsors tonight are, of course, John and Mary Subs. And if you want a great sub, just go to John Mary's. Tell Ranch and Ron sent you. They'll love you for it. And, of course, Dinosaur Barbecue, where mm, it's so good. So we'll be back in 17 seconds. Hope I didn't make you hungry there, Amy. Now you have one of those near you. Right? I love dinosaur barbecue. Right. No, well, I don't know if there's one here. Maybe there's there one is, in New Jersey. But I remember going all the time when I was at Syracuse. Yeah, there's one in New Jersey, and I think for I think mostly in the Alvarez are New York. I believe Delicious. one in New Jersey. I should know this, but yeah, they're everywhere. It is great food. Uh, and once a month, uh, they give me a fifty dollars gift certificate to give away to uh, a viewer. So we awesome. gave one away last week. Um, and uh, we're here every Wednesday at 830, and I'm on every other week. And my, one of my co-hosts is Frank, our curry of, uh, he comes in on every other Wednesday. I invited him tonight, but he couldn't make it. So I thought, hey, yeah, come on. It's like, I'm one of my number one guests I'm ever going to have. I'm so excited. He actually answered me when I asked him. Um, <laughs> so it's great. So, so you know, you get into this, you know, what's – okay, we're going to go a couple questions here, and then we'll do a prediction for tonight's game. Who wins a couple? Do that. And then I'll let you go watch the game. And – I know you're getting ready to go on and work. It's when now when you say you go Sunday night is your night, that's really like 2 a.m. Monday morning, though. Well, but it's not for me. Ron. Right. It becomes I, I've been working all day, right, right, to get ready for the show. Right. When I get into work, it is 1145 or midnight. That's not morning to me. And right. again, I would I need to point out that when I start the show, I'm talking to half the country that's still PM. Yep. And so it, it's part of hosting a national show. You, you, It's not about where I am or what time it is where I am. It's about who the audience is. That's and so right. when I start, half of the U.S. time zones are still on Sunday night or Monday night. And in addition, right. the major, a lot of people who are awake are still awake from the night before, right? There's right. a lot of people that don't go to bed right at midnight. And nope. so it's, it's really about your audience. You have to know yep. your audience. And so um, it's a challenge when you do an overnight show because the timing obviously is different for, for a lot of people, but after 20 years of doing sports radio, I figured it out. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, you get to break certain things first, which is really great. So, yes. um, oh, okay. By the way, my boss just texted me. Yes, I can have July 27th off. So 
I would have called in sick and I'd never done that yet. And all the time I've been there, <laughs> um, no, my work really, my work does support me a lot and which is great. So, and a lot of, a lot of my family and friends, they support us very good on this whole, um, journey we're on uh, for Rome. So, and after we get to adopt him, we will finally be able to show his face right now until we adopt him, we can. So we can put him on social media. We got a couple of his covers face. I'm going to bring him on the show. So, you know, <laughs> Um, so, you know, you're there, you're doing this. All right. So, you know, I, we'll go with the four big sports. Oh, what's your favorite sport? It doesn't have to be one of the big four. What's like your favorite sport to sit down and just watch? Football. Okay. I love football. I've been in love with uh, football since I was a teenager, the adrenaline rush, even before I understood any of the rules or knew anything uh, that that was going on. I just love the excitement of it. Um, and, and it's certainly the number one sport in the country that people care the most about. And so... Uh, but we say football drives the bus on my show. And even when it's not football season, there's still something happening. The NFL, I describe the NFL as a jealous lover. If you start to talk too much or pay too much <laughs> attention to another sport, the NFL gets very envious and throws some crazy news out there, or there's a big trade, or there's other type of football drama. And so, yeah, the NFL is my favorite to watch because you, I can't, I can't quit the NFL like most people. Basketball is the sport I know the best because I've played it, I've coached it, I've officiated it, I've done play-by-play -play for it for the better part of 25 years. Um, and so basketball is the one that I'm most comfortable with. But I also, softball and baseball, uh, I, I did, watched it and covered it my entire life. And I look like a baby giraffe on skates, so I'm not <laughs> great on skates, but I do love hockey, love golf, love to play golf, wish I could play more. Uh, not great at tennis, but I worked for the Tennis Hall of Fame for 10 years, so I know the sport very well. Um, so, yeah, there, I, I, there isn't a sport I don't like except for MMA and UFC. I, I'm not yeah, into I'm that. Not, I, can't, I can't watch yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you know, after, after you watch Rocky movies, how could you be into that? So that's <laughs> cool. Um, no, that, that's great. So, and um, who's your favorite football fan base? <laughs> Oh, well, of course it's the Buffalo Bills. I have to say that while I'm on your show. Right. I know. I know. It, it, we're, we're different. We know we are no, we're special. Different. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's true that no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And our city's different. Like I said, I came back from New York city. I see our city and I go, damn, we're so small, but it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a city girl myself, so yeah. I wouldn't be here if not for right. uh, the job. But I, like I said, I have my little postage stamp of a lawn. I have my little haven in my small town where it's quiet at night. And, and yep. people, the biggest news of the month is that we had a bear wandering around our neighborhood. I mean, that's the big news right now. <laughs> hey, we get that. I mean, there's deers and I'd be all that too. We get bears once in a while, but yes. we're, near the, we're not really like, Two and a half hours from Allegheny State Park. So awesome. All right. So um Star Wars. <laughs> Bring it. I, I I love but Star no Wars. But no spoilers for Obi-Wan because I haven't watched yet. The final no, no, okay, we won't final talk episode. About it. No. Yeah, the final oh, episode. I, mean, I have not. I have not. I have not. Okay. I'll watch it tonight. I have not. Right. Um, and then we'll talk about the cup in a minute in uh Colorado and Tampa in a second here. But so I'm a big Star Wars fan. I hope you saw, I tweeted this morning saying, I saw the original 1977. Yes, I'm very old. My kids tell me that I sat behind Jesus in the third grade. Oh, dear. It, it could be right. Yeah. Um, I'm not that old. Um, well, my kids like to tease me, but they're great. Uh, I saw the first one, 1977. I was nine years old in the theater that year, 56 times in the, in the theater. Whoa. I tell people, that's, but that's the reaction. I go, but everyone was doing it. You could go back and look at old clips of newspapers or wherever you can find, and mm -hmm. you'll see the lines. And back then, movies were over on Buffalo here were two bucks. And if you got to see the first one, and see there's actually there anymore, you could stay and go in the same one. It was uh, the Uni University 80, I think, they had eight theaters. And, um, you know, and it was all orange. And I remember this. And you go in, but if you had a ticket, you could keep going back in the same show, which I thought was weird. But because after the first couple of weeks, it died down. So, you know, my mom thought, here, go two bucks to free babysitter all day. So we would go. I can't say I paid attention every single time, but we were keeping count how long we can do it. And the reason why we stopped was they finally took it out of theaters that I can go to. So 56 times. And then I saw it for the 57th time in 1999 when it came back out. But I didn't like that they did changes they made. I should have left it originally. But when uh, 4, 5, and 6 came back out, spoiler alert, they added some stuff to those ones. You know, and then 1, 2, and 3 came out. And they, they were okay. 3 was good. 1 was like uh, too corny. A little bit, I thought, but uh, and then of course, seven, eight, nine are great. 
And then all these runoff spinoffs like uh, Boba Fett and all that. So mm -hmm. we won't talk about... Um, we won't talk about... Well, um, I just don't want to spoil it for, no, for anyone else who no, hasn't seen Obi-Wan right. yet. I, However, I, I will I, say uh, it's yet, been but. really cool to see you and McGregor bat, back in that role again. It's Yes. And some of the scenes they're putting in there... We're learning a lot, which is cool. Stuff you thought you knew, and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know this. You know, so we won't, we won't even talk. Some people haven't watched any of the episodes, so, you know, they won't touch so we'll leave, we won't even touch it. But you're, <laughs> so you're a big Star Wars fan. How yes, many times did, how many, did you ever, well, so you didn't see the first one in the theater then. Uh, I don't recall which one I first saw in the theaters. Uh, I don't think I saw any of the original prequel, or I'm sorry, the originals in the theaters. I don't think it was until I was older and they were on TV and my mom introduced them to us. When I say older, I just mean till I could understand them. Right, uh, right. I do remember that we were in sixth and seventh grade and we were already playing uh, Star Wars in the basement. We had all the figurines. We had X-Wing yep. fighters. We had Y-Wing yep. fighters. We had... Uh, we had all the characters and the little bases. We had an ad at Walker. And so I yes. do remember doing that when we were in sixth and seventh, maybe seventh and eighth grade um, in our basement in New Hampshire. And so I'm pretty sure I didn't see any of the originals in theaters. Right. I think I saw them all on TV, but I've mm -hmm. been a, a huge fan ever since. And now, what? not only did I enjoy the last three movies, uh, seven, eight, and nine, but I started reading books over the last five years from yep. the George Lucas canon. And then last year, a friend of mine suggested that I start watching the, the, the so going back to Clone Wars, the original Clone Wars animated series. Yeah. So I watched all seven seasons of that. And now I'm in the middle of Rebels, which actually <laughs> actually coincides with the time period of Obi-Wan. So right now I'm kind of immersed in that time period between episodes two and three. And then after Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. So yeah. I am. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely. <laughs> it's, <alert. laughs> it's absolutely opened up a whole new world for me to yeah. be. You know, to be almost feeling as though I'm rediscovering Star Wars again, like I did when right. I was a kid. Yeah, and people always ask me, like, "Hey, if I start watching Star Wars, I just go one, two, three. No, you have to go four, five, six, one, two, three, because there's things said in one and two. Like, for example, when uh, uh, Obi Wan is talking to Anakin, when like maybe uh, Episode two, when he sits there and says, "How do I feel? You're gonna be the death of me." Well, that makes you laugh because we know how Obi Wan died. So <laughs> it's those kind of you know, and then there's little things said that you you know you know you know who are 2 d 2 and c 3 But if you start with one, two, three, I just don't think it would be the same if you went in that order. I just don't. I think you have to go four, five, six, then go back to one, two, three. Yeah. And then all these How do you like Rogue was, One? Rogue One, Rogue was, one was amazing. Was great. I yes. think it's it's my, actually, Empire Strikes Back out of the nine is the best one to me. Okay. Uh, Empire Strikes Back was just great. Um, Rogue One is, oh, it's a, it's real, I had it's Solo. Tremendous. Solo, yeah, Solo yeah. was great too. Solo was great too. But yeah, Rogue One, and if somebody doesn't understand it, that's after that's um, just before original a new hope. Before. Yes, right, it leads into hope. a new hope. Yeah. Because in Star Wars, when they say people died for this, that's that's what that movie's about. So it, it it is great, you know, and you know, and I would recommend if anyone's ever going to say, "I'm okay, maybe I'll, my boss has never seen it." My boss has said he tells me this, and he's, I said, "Why do you tell me these things? You can't, you can't." How are you not? That's like saying you haven't seen Gone with, okay, I haven't seen Gone with the Wind, but, um, you know, I just mentioned that, but I mean, this would be weird. Like, you know, um, like it's like saying you never saw Top Gun or something. Maybe people have it. I don't know, but a Star Wars fans, we understand, I guess. Uh, I, we can tolerate those non-Star Wars fans, but I'll never be able to relate to them. Right. right. There's more of us than there are of you. I will tell you, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, it's, and it's just, it's just great. And it's, it's not just just sci-fi. It's just the stories itself. You oh, know. George Lucas created some amazing characters. Yeah. So the character yeah. development is phenomenal. Yeah. All right. And so we got to talk hockey, Ron, because yes. A, I had yeah, to yeah, eat yeah. dinner, and B, yep. the game is starting. All right. So the Tampa Bay Lightning are now down two games to one. They probably yep. shocked a lot of people in game three, but I don't think they should be shocked. Tampa doesn't seem to go away. Um, who wins tonight? Well, that I have no idea, but I will oh, I say know. that we've seen this pattern before with the Lightning. Uh, it's pretty evident that they are comfortable at home. They have a franchise record eight game winning streak uh, in their own arena during the playoffs, though Colorado was just dealt its first loss at home in these playoffs. So Colorado, in my opinion, is the better team. They've got more talent, but 
the lightning are resilient. They're built for this. They have the heart and the medal of the champion, and they're the toughest out in sports right now. There is no tougher out in sports. This is the third series out of four in which they've been down 0-2 and see how that turned out. I don't so think I'm not that, worried I don't think about that. You, you said that the other day, but I think the Rangers series was the only one. The first no, time they, lost. they were down to Toronto 0-2. Are you sure? Because I don't think they lost back to back games until this uh, Ranger game. You, when you said that, I went to look that up too. And I don't think so. I think Tampa Bay won the first game versus Toronto. You said that, and I go, wait a minute. I don't think that was right. Because okay. I, I know the Rangers they were. And I meant to look that up. I wasn't going to bring it up unless you did. I kind of forgot. But um, now you make me wonder. But I thought like they had this haven't lost two in a row forever thing going on. And it, I think the Rangers were the first ones to do it, I believe. I could be wrong. I don't know. But uh, we'll have to look that up So uh, sometime. So, you know, in your prediction, who do you think wins the Stanley Cup? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't. But I'll stick with Colorado just because they've already won two. And it's really difficult to come back, especially yeah. when you're this deep into it. They're, yeah. they're more well-rested. I know they're missing a couple of pieces. Now, the thing, the major advantage, of course, is the goaltending. Now that Vasilevsky has rallied. And I love that John Cooper said that even if, even if he had gone out to get Vasilevsky in game two when he was giving up five, six, seven goals – uh, right. Andre wouldn't have come out of the game. And I love the way that he responded in game number three. So they right. do have the better goaltending, but Colorado can be relentless. They got outplayed in every way in game number three. So let's see what happens in game number four. But I wouldn't right. be surprised if the series is is tied again after game four. Right. I think um, well, I put money on t- – I don't bet. I'm not a better by this free – uh, bet thing, so I, you know, I got fit, like some money at it, and so I bet on Colorado to win the cup back on March twentieth, and I have this amount coming. And then while it's been getting closer, they've been I offered me money to buy it out, so I would win less. So I uh, after the game two, the game that they went up to nothing, I I cashed out. So I'm gonna not, I could have won thirty more dollars if Colorado wins the cup, but I cashed out. And last night is I see I'm glad I did because I just don't know. Um, it's it's weird. I'm rooting for Colorado just because it'll be something different. Um, yes, it would be cool to man, have I, a first cup yeah. in twenty plus years. Yeah, I I yeah versus I think it was New Jersey back in two thousand one, right? They beat. Um, yeah, I, I just think it will. I think Colorado will win. I think overall they're a better team. I think Tampa Bay has got to be tired. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna predict Colorado, but I hope it goes seven games in overtime. So, yeah, that'd be great. Well, remember, uh, as much as we talk about Colorado being up 2-0, that first game was sudden death. Yes, and uh, they scored. They were down 3-1, and they scored tied up, and they scored like a minute and a half. I was actually – that's why I was in New York, and they scored a minute and a half then. And, again, I was rooting for Colorado because I was invested at that point. Now I am now I just want to go seven games. I'll be happy. I don't hate either of these one of these teams. The only team I hate in uh, hockey is Boston, and they're out. So I'm good with that. So, you know. <laughs> Well, you got to go to work in a few hours. And yeah. I, I, well, I'm I, already – I need to start working now, yes. actually. Get, get your dinner going, and um, I'll, I'll listen to you in about eight hours. I'll be listening – or no, yeah, eight hours. It's 8, 8 13 here. So um, I'll be listening to everybody at Jamie Lawrence of CBS Sports Radio. You find it on your station here in Buffalo. It's WGR 550. She's on from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., and for those overnight people when you're at work, just pop it on the radio. You know, just tell your boss some tunes. You'll be listening to Amy. You will learn a lot from Amy. She's funny. Um, <laughs> it, no, you are. You are. You know, you are absolutely funny. And um, I got to be careful sometimes when I'm driving because I, you know, I, I got to pull up. Just, I, I was just something I just wanted to bring up something. I can bring up so much with you. I can talk to you all day because you are so funny when you talk. You guys are just <laughs> making you, me laugh. Ron. And, um, so I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you being on. Follow you. you can, at, people uh, can find me on Twitter, A Law Radio, if they are interested right. in connecting. That's I like right to connect out. with people on social. Yep. Sometimes, sh- not yep. always. And, yep, and she'll write. You got to be nice, and uh, you re- and you uh, should respond to your twits, twitters too. If you, uh, I do respond you, to tweets. You, yes, Ron. Yeah, you're good tweets. <laughs> um, you know, I tweeted that the other day, and you mentioned what I said. I forgot what I tweeted you. Uh, oh, <laughs> you were asking about. Uh, uh, I can't remember now, but you, you had a question about something, and I, I gave my answer, and you said it, and I was like, oh, she is live. So, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I, I just thought you – I or I thought you were in L.A. because gotcha. I, I, really, I thought that. Well, Rocket Morgan Studios, that just sounds so L.A. So <laughs> I just said, you know, um, boy, I did get some free advertising here, Rocket Studio. You better send me some cash. So uh, we'll let you go. I enjoyed Maybe you'll come on again sometime, I hope. All and right, um, 
Will you end the show with what you always end your show with? Sure. If you would like me to. I Are you ready? To. On and, then one, I, and then I will do a mic drop. Yeah, we'll, we'll mic drop and we'll call night. Everybody, this has been the Ranting Cast with Ranting Around the Ranter with my favorite radio personality before 6 a.m., Amy Lawrence of CBS Sports Radio. You can follow her at ALAW Radio. A Law Radio, it's Amy Lawrence. It has nothing to do with the law. Go. Boom. Good night, everybody.